the, the lecture by interviewing things. Uh, I'm Joseph Lund, the director of the Confucius Institute. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and to come to this uh, regular CI Nur lecture. And before I introduce our speaker, let me say a few things about the CI, because I see some new faces here. The CI, the Confucius Institute, is uh, launched to promote Chinese arts and culture on campus. So, and we have a variety of shows and performances, and so you are all welcome to join them. And please make sure that you sign your email uh, address at the back so that we know how to contact you and you can see what kind of exciting music exhibition program that uh, you, you would find interesting and you know where and when they are being held. So, uh, please so that we welcome you uh, to join all design activities. Today's event is very particular, and first we have to acknowledge Professor Anita Gonzalez, because this is really a collaboration between the CI and the School of Music, Theatre and Dance, but of course the drama department through Professor Anita Gonzalez, who connect and uh, have us invite Mr. Mann to come here. So, now, uh, if you haven't read, taken a copy of this, at least take a copy of this CI pamphlet, we have lost it events uh, throughout the term, this term and the second term. And, uh, well, right now I have to tell you uh, two reality things. And we have scheduled a lecture concert for next November, November 1st, Saturday, but because of these problems, our artists cannot come, so we have to reschedule those, those lecture and concert. And actually, also on November 5th, we have another noon concert, uh, presentation. We have scheduled a lecture by an anthropologist, but also because of scheduling problems, we have to shift the uh, content a little bit. So it will be a presentation by two of our students that whom we sent to China for a workshop. So yes, it's true. If you are a good Chinese student of Chinese arts and culture on UM, Confucius Institute will send you to Beijing free, five-star uh, accommodation. So, if you are interested in going to China to learn Chinese art and culture, you are still there, contact me and come to CI event. You will get a free trip to Beijing. Okay? Uh, so, come next Wednesday and uh, in November 5, and then you can learn how to do it. Right? It's all painful, you know? Uh, so, and then, um, then we have two very significant lectures uh, in November. One is on uh, Chinese drama, where we learn to do this. And then December 1, we have another lecture on uh, Chinese folk songs and regional culture. But today we have uh, invited uh, Mr. Jonathan Mann to come to give a very exciting lecture on Chinese theater, contemporary theater, uh, how it is on the to the And Mr. Mann is the perfect person to do this because to do this talk and how the East and West theater wise. Uh, that you really need a globalized and metropolitan citizen, and I don't think anyone can more metropolitan than Mr. Man. I know that he has some Hong Kong heritage, some Chinese heritage, but he grew up in London and earned a degree in physics. Maybe that's why he's so smart and systematic. And then gradually moved on to theater, and having done very successfully um, in between having got in Japan. English, so he is really a good man. So now he is uh, directing theaters on three four continent, China, East Asia, North America, and London, with his home base, and we all know London is really a major theater center, and he's, uh, I bet his bio is related to all the famous theaters in London. So, and he has been directing many theater, that kind of, uh, addresses the issue of East and West cultural con connections, exchange, and so even this title is fantastic, really in the East, because some of you may not know this. Uh, reverse comment on a very famous China, Chinese novel, journey, journey to the West. So this is Journey to the East. It means anything is exciting as the Journey to the West, and you are in the trip. So with no further ado, Still see the slide of how I'm starting it? 
Okay, great. Uh, my name is Jonathan, Jonathan Mapp. I am a theatre director based in London. And uh, it's, it's my pleasure uh, to be here today to talk to you about uh, contemporary Chinese theatre and to compare that to the uh, theatre in uh, the West. Um, yeah, so, yes, Journey to the East is a play on the, the original journey to the West, where a monk from China goes to India during the Tang Dynasty. Uh, collects some scrolls and takes it back uh, to China, introducing Buddhism to China. So um, I think that's well. That's so this is my tale from Journey to the West. So it's a show that I started in, in, in um, back in 2008 during the Beijing Olympics, and it uh, yeah. So here we've got. Uh, can anyone guess what the characters that at the front? Can anyone guess? Yes, come on. Some of God in English, who's that? Uh, English, that means the monkey king. So this is the monkey. And at the back is um, uh, the monk. So we've actually got these two characters that have been like Chinese storytellers. Uh, anyway, this is production done in London. And they play all the different roles of Jeremy from the West, like the demons, the monsters, etc. And what's unique about this production, um, there's sort of two things really. Firstly, it is set by uh, the, the original stories in the Tang Dynasty. Does anyone know when the Tang Dynasty it was? Anyone? I think this gentleman knows. I think this gentleman knows as well. Anyone else? I think David, please enlighten us. Actually, uh, very early in the Tang Dynasty. Yes. And the Han um, monks went after him without permission. Yes. Because they were so upset uh, in terms of national security. Yes. And uh, yes, very early tennis, these like in the uh, 7th century, um, maybe approximately. So, um, you know, it spans a few centuries. So the, re so the, uh, the details here, like the, this, the plans are taken from scrolls from that era, uh, and costumes, etc. So most productions in the UK dipping into Chinese culture kind of look like a, like a Chinese restaurant almost, and you know the potpourri of Chinese stuff. But this one's you know specifically it's rooted in Tang, and I've used uh, actors who. Where, where do you think these actors are from? Any guesses? Look like. Alright, is it clear? Anyone? China. They, they're like me. They're, uh, this gentleman on the front is. Uh, Singaporean Chinese, I moved to the UK, and uh, the girl at the back is like myself, she's a British born Chinese. We all spoke Cantonese, so we use a little bit of Cantonese in our work as well. So this, this production played to children, aged six upwards, to families. So the children, so we had schools coming in the day, and we had uh, families coming at the weekends, and The Monkey King was a very popular TV series in the UK. So this production sold out as soon as we, pretty much as soon as we uh, put this up. Okay. Um, and so it's the journey to the east. So I'm going to start with me in the west. Okay. So let's, I'm going to introduce a couple of shows that I did in the west to see what my thinking and how I, you know, when I first became a theatre director, I wanted to do Chekhov and Shakespeare, and you know, but done in a very conventional mainstream way. But things have slightly changed, you know. Can anyone guess uh, who doesn't know? Is this something they do? Guess, no, guess which play this is. Oh, hands up, sorry. Really? Right, let's go here. No clue. Go get my guess. This is the whole year for next year. Does anyone know any theatre plays in this room? Okay, let's have a guess. Uh, hands up, any. I mean, Juliet. And let me, let me, let's just go to check, actually. Hands up, any theatre plays in here? Gosh, okay. Right. Any um, science majors? Science, scientists? Oh, I feel a connection there already with the scientists. Any social studies? Well, I'm not sure you call it in the, in the yes. Okay. Sociology? Sociology? Okay. Business? Business? Chinese studies? Okay. Into arts? Okay. Okay, let's. Okay, okay, any other, which other, um, what other uh, departments in Michigan University are from? Just be shout out. English, great. Anyone, any others? 
Psychology, history of arts, any others? So? Women's studies. Oh my gosh, great. Okay, so I won't ask too many theatre questions. But you said Romeo and Juliet. Yes, it's a, it's a Shakespeare, but it isn't Romeo and Juliet. Is there any other Shakespeare's from Romeo? It's a comedy. Midsummer Maid's Dream. Yes, they are. This is Hermia and Lysander, and it's reset when? Yes, come on, say hello. Come on, let's be shy. At the back, yes? I heard you say it. Yeah, Japan. Yes, we set in feudal Japan. So I reset it in the time of Shakespeare, 1600, in feudal Japan. And you know, there you've got the very traditional Japanese drama, no drama sort of style. Kabuki, which is a dance style. And Kyogen, which is a clowning style. And then one more little guessing game before I move on. How about this, how about this play? Any guesses? Lots of clues in there. Macbeth. Saigon. Sorry? Miss Saigon. Miss Saigon. Oh, We've got to that one. Okay, <laughs> Macbeth. Okay, it is classic. Um, it's a bit older than that. Sorry? They miss. No, it's, bit, it's much older than that. Yeah. It's yeah. centuries old. Yeah. Antigone, you're getting close, very close. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Um, no, not, that's not Fantasma, is it? Antigone, so it's close to Antigone. Yeah. Yes. The day at the front and you've got the chorus at the back. But I reimagined it um, with the playwright in Korean American uh, family. So there's a Korean American, American Medea who feels so disenfranchised by being an immigrant that she does murder her kids because of her husband and everything around. So the chorus characters at the back uh, also play, uh, or literally play a TV program called Chinkin Gooky, very much like Beavis and Butthead. They are. <laughs> so it's very naughty. And then you say also, we, we, they, uh, Asian, Asian Americans and British East Asians, we don't quite like um, Miss Saigon. So currently in London, at the front in our West End, we've got these girls with like these tiny little um, East Asian girls, tiny, tiny little bits of underwear. Open everything out so you can see everything. And it's a big, bloody, big um, um, sign, you know, uh, on, on the West End. Uh, you know, uh, playing prostitutes and strippers. So, uh, that's, that's, uh, you know, so we've turned it on its head. So we've got uh, this, this. There's a musical in this version called Mr. Phnom Penh. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we've got an Asian, East Asian um, protagonist, and we've got uh, 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 a Caucasian uh, girl who dies for the club. Um, that she's you know, but played by the chorus. So it's a you know, an Asian in a wig playing a different way. So it's all messed up. <laughs> So my journey to the uh, east started going to the west, connecting to my uh, my colleagues in Asia and Asian America. So you know, these are the Asian American theatre makers across the states gathered for a conference four years ago in LA. There's hundreds, and you might not see this work, in, you know. So you might there is journey to the east, but the eastern uh, East Asian inspired work is here currently in America, all across America. So, you know, so, and then um, I guess I did do some readings. I went to um, Moon Theatre in Minneapolis, a very established Asian American theatre in Minneapolis, and uh, this, they commissioned the play that I'm doing reading really about next week, which I'll talk about a bit later. So, uh, my next stop was, uh, oh no, and, and so but I do other work too, so just very briefly, there's a piece here that I did about. Um, Aging Dementia, and it's a, it's a company called Luminous Theatre Company in London. So we got to know them, I got to know them doing a piece of Aging and of Dementia. Um, next, uh, and I like my colourblind casting, you might notice. So our next project, let's start with it in London, and then we went to, anyone guess, where is that? Beijing. Beijing, what does that say? In London, put them on, please. English, Potomac, please. <laughs> Does it say Potomac? Yes, and that is the capital theatre. She, she's translated it for me. I was going to show you off my Chinese. I can't speak any Mandarin. Really. It's the capital theatre, and that contains um, the People's Arts Theatre and the People's Arts Experimental Theatre. Um, so uh, Beijing has three national theatres. Uh, this is one of them, probably the most established one. Uh, and then they got the new one, which is the egg. Uh, I don't know what the real name for it is. 
of national censorship for the arts. What's, uh, Joseph, what's that in Mandarin and Egypt? Yeah, that's the reason we're talking. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, national theatre. Yes, and then there's one the national theatre called the National Theatre, which is more touring company. But this is the most traditional national theatre. I was invited to do a show there in uh, its, its experimental theatre. It's a part of the Beijing International Fringe Festival. And there I am with my two actors. And we do, did two plays. One production, which was uh, a non-naturalistic play. So this is inspired by Beckett. It's a play called this uh, Magical Chairs by the writer Nani Mazzilli, who is uh, a, a, an Italian writer who uh, is lectures in Chinese uh, theatre and film and speaks Mandarin. You know, so it's, you know, so Italy and China has had quite a long relationship since Marco Polo to now. So I'm um, continuing in there. So it's this non-naturalistic play. It doesn't matter who the cast is. I've used a uh, black British actor and a, a British Asian actor. And then I went to do this play about my story as a British Chinese growing up in the UK. There's only one way in Lee. So, you know, so, and we performed this at the Beijing uh, International Fringe Festival. And the audience that came to see it was lots and lots and lots of young people. I mean, young theatre is absolutely bursting with young people in China. And, you know, it's the opposite of here. It's a growing art form. This festival gets bigger and bigger every year. Um, unfortunately, it's not that interaction from the West, so I'm the first British director to take a show to this, and there was an American director who did one last year. So, for one of the biggest festivals in China, uh, we're not really engaging with the West yet, and there's a huge opportunity to raise that interest in the, the And the uh, theatre which the young people at the ABC is theatre, you know, they don't seem to see contemporary, contemporary this theatre. This, there's a recent, both new pieces in the UK. And there are many reasons for that. But for theatre going from the West to, to China, they have to <coughs> overcome one very big barrier. Can anyone tell me what it is? No. Visa. No. It's not language, it's not visa. Uh, there's a book called, uh, well, I'm not sure if it's mentioned that book. Yeah, but um, what happens when, you, when things have to be vetted? What do you call that? Absolutely. Correct. So most Western plays have to go to, the, and this play did, to go for the script, as a translation, as a video, the Dutch and I did, go to the authorities in China to be approved, to be able to uh, be performed. And um, we did get the, um, the uh, approval, and we had to do it months in advance. So essentially, censorship uh, is probably the large, one of the largest barriers, but you can, but you just have to be prepared. You have to be prepared to have, um, your script's ready, your translation's ready, some footage of it ready, you know, and it's, 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 it's the British <coughs> censorship until uh, 1968 at the Lord Chamberlain's office, so it's a fact of life, the British theatre. And the Americans had the Hayes Code, the third until any film majors here with the Hayes Code, I lost them until. Yeah, I'm on the mic. Uh, so, yes, it's, I think it was in the 60s, any, yeah, something like that, the Hayes Code. And here, the, we certainly had sort of lots, of, uh, lots of intellectual censorship in the McCarthy trials. When were the McCarthy trials? 50s? Okay, so, um, and so, yeah, so, you know, so it's just, it, it's, uh, yeah. Of course, the issues of translation and visas, of course, but, you know, the, the, uh, we, but the subtitles we had for this, we got a, a Chinese, a, British, uh, no, a Hong Kong uh, Chinese playwrights present in the UK to translate the subtitles. Often the translations are done by the intern or student or whatever, and they're horrible. But our Chinese translation was done by uh, a very, very respected uh, Chinese playwright. And we wrote us the, the subtitles in the UK in front of uh, an audience so we could, they were tested out. So if you take the effort with subtitles, and explanations, you can really, really, um, yeah, it, it, you can surmount things. Yes? How about the censorship impact you? What kind of themes or approaches would be beyond the pale? Oh, I wouldn't know. Uh, you would probably need to speak to uh, a producer of a theater of in China or, you know, that's how it works. You don't have an idea of which particular complex areas might be, might be particularly well. 
Uh, no, 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 I think that, yeah, uh, 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 for me it was sort of process based, you know, so it's like just to submit my play with the, 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 the wheels, so now uh, that's not something I'm so aware of. Um, so, yeah, and so, uh, so there are plays in translation that are performed a lot in China. It's Sarah Kane, who's everywhere. I was like, Sarah Kane? She's not very happy person. What do they think was British people? Um, Pinter is very popular as well. And the year before we had the Pinter season, that's why I chose to do Magical Chairs, which is very inspired by Pinter, Sarah Kane, Beckett, you know? And picking the right material. So, it, the, the, do, are people a bit familiar with the Premier League soccer? Are people familiar with soccer? Yes, okay. So the Premier Song is incredibly popular in China. And so this play is actually uh, about football. So the black British lad is very good at football. The Chinese guys are terrible, but they become friends. He helps them become better at football, so he's bullied. So this is the right subject material. Um, we just brought in the audience. Just brought in the audience. Very good. After this, I've been to the Beijing International Fringe Festival. I went straight to, uh, to, to Xiamen in South China. And I went to the ITI World Congress. So ITI is a part of UNESCO, which is part of the United Nations, to uh, foster a uh, theatre for uh, you know, intercultural exchange. So, and I, was, I uh, spoke on theatre and engaged young engage people. Um, and also, what, what, um, so that this, this, next, this year is going to be in Europe, but it was fun, it's amazing to be at this, uh, and, at, at this event. Um, and then it, uh, during the festival, they had uh, during the conference, this, this, this conference, they had uh, called the Rotishi Sichu. I can't quite make it up. My Chinese is very good, but this is the, the Road to Chinese Opera. Um, and so here's some little some demonstrations of Chinese opera during the, during the, uh, the, the World Congress. We've also got to see very famous operas as well. Can anyone recognize this opera? I can't remember the title, but it's about this. And what's the there's two characters involved, Tao Tao is kind of white face, long beard, yes. and then there's antagonist in the piece of the Yang Chou. Yes. So that's the two guys. Yes. Tao Tao and Yang Chou. Yes, it's, and it's basically the this one person, one person that's standing for goodness is executed by another. It's a bit like the Miss I would say. Possibly. No, Mao is a Okay. Possibly that as well. So, um, you know, so it's like this is the Chinese opera, they miss. Okay, so, really beautiful. And I saw so many operas there. Uh, and then, contemporary stuff, this is a show called Ping Pong that was on the Beijing Fringe Festival. Um, so, you know, it's young people, yeah, they're just, they're just very, very enthusiastic. And this piece is about love between um, young people in China. Um, in the moment, lots of ping pong balls are all, but I didn't catch the movement. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and I saw, yeah, lots of new plays by Chinese, but they, they, they seem to be very oblique. Now, I don't understand any Mandarin whatsoever, but uh, it's enough, I see, you know, I can see the themes. I'm, some, I normally will uh, whisper to the person next to me, what's that, what's that? <laughs> you know, and they're very kindly able to, to tell me what's going on. Uh, and the things that are some of the new ones I saw in China, I get that very much, lots of love related things, but I saw something about a play, a brief play about um, the, uh, the destruction of the hutongs in China, what's being built, and temples and the new stuff, but the way of belief was quite a strange and comedy. Uh, as I saw also the last, I saw Sarah Kane, and of course Sarah Kane advertised. But Beijing really is the centre of theatre in China. You've got those three national theatres. You've got so many, we call it storefront theatres here, we've got fringe theatres. And it's just starting the commercial um, you know, um, theatre as well. So, you know, the very big um, uh, play was happening, so it used to happen there when I was there. Uh, you know, one of my friends is in it. Uh, you know, I don't know if you can guess, um, they give you a clue. Um, Waterloo. S of S? Abba? Yes. Okay. Uh, what's the title of the musical? Mamma Mia. Yes, Mamma Mia. I did. So I was performed in the glass house there. Uh, translated into Mandarin, but using the initial, original creative team, so uh, Lydia Lloyd and her team, a bunch of translators. Uh, and, you know, this, uh, you know, they've had like Western musicals go over to China in English, but, you know, um, there's only so much market for it, whereas the ones that translated into Mandarin 
uh, for two miles, as Charles called it, uh, became much more popular. So since this one, I've had cats. I know war horse from the Nationals going over. Uh, I think, uh, yes, if you're talking about censorship, I, I, I could mention Manus, but then it didn't get, I don't know what happened with that one. And so, yeah, uh, and interestingly enough, uh, theatre, you know, the, the, the shows that are popular are created in the West End, not in America. So all the shows I've mentioned are very created in the West End. But they're branded as Broadway shows, because the British haven't really gotten on to the fact that there is a people that like theatre in China. I'm perhaps one of the first few that are British, you know. But Americans are much further down that line. So these shows are branded Broadway shows, and, uh, you know, being born there. So, you know, unfortunately I couldn't take pictures during my year, but uh, anyway, we'll see. Okay, uh, but, not, but where, do you, where does the young artist congregate in China? Can anyone guess where this is? Yes, it's very good. Where in China? Uh, it's, it's three numbers. <laughs> okay, it's the 798 district in China with all the visual artists and live artists that are. And so I, I, uh, I was able to meet some of them and watch a piece there. Formed. So it's 798 district is a formed factory area that's deserted and our artists went in to take over. <coughs> and this is a live art piece or theatre piece that I saw. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. There weren't any sessions during the Beijing International Fringe Festival for me to meet young actors, and, sorry, to meet young, young directors and young producers. So we had our own meeting. So here's the next generation of uh, theatre movies that you will probably hear about in 10 years' time, or your age now, that I met in Beijing. And one of them already came over to uh, Scotland for the residency. And, you know, so, you know, it's about this intercultural, it's just meeting me, me meeting them to inspire each other. I have their emails and uh, uh, bits on Beijing, I'll have lots of people to hang out with, you know, and we find our own spaces, really. There is censorship, but you can find your own spaces. And visual art, live art isn't censored, so you can find, you know, the ways forward. So that's Beijing. Um, any uh, questions on Beijing before I move on? Yes? So, like, why is The question was, how wide is the boundary between classical art and contemporary modern? Um, in Beijing, there was certainly the Chinese opera and all that performed. Um, so if, but some of the pieces, like the piece that was about um, the, the moving, uh, you know, the move, clearance of the old architecture of the new, brought in traditional Chinese theatre elements. So the Beijing opera, Beijing opera costume, so there's some magical realism. So I think, you know, uh, there's lots of, um, text-based theatre that isn't like that, just like our art familiar, etc. But a lot of stuff does do this magical realism. And Chinese theatre up until the beginning of the 20th century was very much the traditional form, which integrated music, dance, uh, you know, song. And this our modern theatre only came in the early 20th century. But you know, they're catching up. So, you know, so I would say, just, just say, if you see theatre in New York, you'll see the mix of stuff that uses old and new. Stuff that's just new, stuff that's just old. So, you know, I couldn't answer that kind of comprehensively, but I can see evidence of all three. Any more questions from Beijing? I should go to Beijing. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lovely great wall that is the Living City. It's amazing. It's one of the most popular places in the world. Okay. Right. Uh, now the quiz. Another play. What do you think this might be? Come on, the English and the theatre people. Shout out. In your time, I'll just give you clues. <coughs> oh, do you not know any plays? Where's, 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 where's the dudes? I need to talk to these dudes. Okay, come on. Any plays? Go on. Hedda Gabler? Hedda Gabler. Ah, uh, it's traditional, but it's cool. It's a traditional union to Shakespeare. Could you repeat what you just said? It's uh, he, the, the gentleman back said Hedda Gabler, and I said it's not Hedda Gabler. No, it's, but, but it is Shakespeare. Oh, it's Shakespeare. No, but it's on an island. Yeah. Come on. 
Which other ones on the island? As you like it, no? Uh, don't worry, the theatre majors, and I did this, show this about the theatre majors, went for the whole... The more of Venice? No, went for the whole theatrical called Canon, and they didn't come and guess. It's, it's the pro progenitor of all romantic comedies. There's a very feisty female role that all the most of the actresses want to kill to play. Sorry? Roman G. No, it's much ado about nothing. So recently, you know. So um, this is in Shanghai for Shanghai Refugee Theatre. This is a mixed a semi commercial company that's expat and uh, uh, Chinese. And uh, when I was in Xiamen, I went to Gula New Island. Anyone who came me to Gula New Island? Hands up. One, to say, Gulu Island is one of the most famous islands in, in China. Uh, you know, it's also known as Piano Island. It's beautiful, and it's where it's a, got a mix of expats and Chinese for every century. So whenever I do a theatre play, I always think about um, how to connect with local audiences. So these expats in Shanghai and have been playing other people for so many years. I want them to play themselves. So researching expat communities, but they grew on new hands, Italians, French, etc. It's a much different in the 70s. And they were playing Italians, but in China, a hundred years ago. And I wanted to use something a bit more politically correct than the Crusades, which is much to do with the Quran killing crusading. And then they, um, after crusading, they come back, so I don't know. So I chose the Boxer Rebellion. So we set it in the Boxer Rebellion, post-Boxer Rebellion in the 1900s, in the New Island, so, you know, the the Westerners are playing Westerners, the Chinese are playing Chinese. So, you know. And then here is the uh, cast and crew. We've got Italians, Brits, Canadians, Americans, Chinese, Malaysians. Wonderful. You know. And with, with this concept, Gulag like New Island, it just brought in a lot of Chinese audience that wouldn't come to. Uh, it's performing in English with subtitles. Uh, and you see the stage here. For any theatre makers, what's that staging? Okay, I'll tell you. So this is the same, the same dimensions as the Globe Theatre in London. Anyone know the Globe Theatre in London? Globe Theatre is a you know, theatre that is Shakespeare's theatre. So I thought, let's bring um, Elizabethan theatre practices to China. So, you know, so it's the same entrances and exits here and here, and side entrances and exits, no furniture, you know, and, uh, you know, so we had the, the Vice Principal Shanghai Theatre Academy came to see this. I was astonished he brought uh, Elizabethan theatre style to China. So it's worked on, so I do things on multi level. It worked on the academic level, the Elizabethan theatre, it works on the cross cultural level, and it works basically telling the story. You know, so this setting is to connect the audiences and they can tell the story clearly. Okay, um, is there anyone else? Yes. And then one more piece of it in Shanghai is a piece called Shelter. A modern, so there's a new playwriting competition. I directed the Roman piece by a Fulbright scholarship. Playwright, uh, does everyone, everyone heard of Fulbrights? Mm -hmm. Yeah, most people. So Fulbright wrote this play, one new competition. I directed it. It's called Shelter. So it's based. It's a play of imagining that um, Iraq has bombed America. <laughs> America doesn't exist anymore, and so these are refugees, American refugees in Shanghai. You know, and there's one Chinese American has to actually pretend to be male and Chinese to live because they, they're going to be moved to internment camps and disposed of these, um, some, these leech Americans. Uh, so, you know, so that's the play with me. And, uh, you know, so she's a Yale graduate and so highly educated in this, that and the other. A very, very absolutely fascinating piece looking at uh, the tensions between modern China and the Middle East. And expats. So, you know, so this is uh, so I sort of do uh, new writing uh, and uh, traditional things as well. Uh, the theatre in Shanghai is very different to um, to uh, Beijing. There's much less uh, theatre in Shanghai. Um, there are some stories in theatres and some. There's Shanghai uh, drama. Shanghai S T A C drama. S T A C. Uh, Shanghai Dramatic Arts Centre, which I worked at as an assistant director nearly a decade ago, and uh, you know, and I'm into the now uh, to collaborate with them on a future project. And the, uh, the, they have a playwright there called Nick Yu, whose plays are the most popular plays 
in China, uh, produced everywhere, in every place. And his style is uh, modern work, that like word twist. Um, and I've done uh, readings of Nick Yu's work uh, in the UK and the States. With a bit of luck, Nick Yu's work will be staged in the West. But you know, uh, we'll get, I don't know why. Um, and theatre companies, yeah, I mean, the Shanghai Theatre Academy has, does a lot of theatre, um, uh, uh, supports students doing theatre. Um, you know, but there's much, much less theatre in Shanghai than in uh, Beijing. Uh, but the commercial theatre companies are based in Shanghai. But the Shanghai Dramatic Arts Centre is very prolific and its program is very much like the public theatre. Or uh, what's the nearest regional theatre in here, Anita? India used to be India. Yeah, so you know, so the SDAC's program is very much like the regional theatres here. So you'll see Tennessee Williams, Noises Off by Rob Frame, all that stuff. Plus new writing. Any questions on Shanghai theatre? Or comments, observations? Yes. What do you think about commercial theatre? Commercial theatre is, I uh, mean, Mamma Mia's uh, cats, all that kind of stuff. Yes. Thank you, the back. You said that Shanghai theatre is less robust than Beijing, but I didn't catch why. Yes, the, I, uh, I, I'm not sure why, but I think it's because Beijing is the cultural capital of uh, China. So you've got all the, from the live artist to, through to the, uh, the culture that leads to the city as the political centre. So it might be, uh, I don't know why, but I speculate that it's because Beijing is the cultural capital of China, and political, uh, and then Shanghai is the commercial, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I guess. Yes? So that's how many experimental artists in China, you know, is that something to do with mm -hmm. the Shanghai education? No, um, funding for artists comes through local government. They don't have, to my knowledge, the Trust of Foundation. Um, you know, um, uh, uh, organizational um, organizational system. So you know, so things are funded through local government. So the, lots of the, 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 the storefront theatres in Beijing are funded by local government. Those local governments will fund an artist. So through that way, that's one way. The other way, place where experimental artists reside is in, in universities. So the experimental artists local paid by postgraduate students, um, you know, or lecturers. Right. Well, any more questions from Shanghai? Okay, so there's, there's two big centres. We've got Beijing and Shanghai. What's the other big centre? Not quite in China, but in special in the Australian region. That's been in the headlines. Anyone? Yes. So here I am in the Hong Kong Repertory Theatre. I was the artist, guest artist of the last daughter. So I think Jason is correct that I have travelled a little bit. <laughs> um, so, you know, and I joined them on the tour of a show where to went to Beijing. You can't read it at the back, but it says Bay Lane Theatre, one show. Um, so, you know, so I've read a play called The Bowl for the Pioneers about uh, Chinese immigrants in Hong Kong in the 1960s. And we took the show back to, uh, to Guangzhou, Shanghai. And I got to see theatre making, touring theatre, uh, I've seen film theatre in many different ways, fringe theatre uh, uh, and this much more large scale theatre. This is the casting crew, um, you know, and the Shanghai Repertory, sorry, the Hong Kong Repertory Theatre has a, uh, 16 actors, a repertory of actors that they keep for year and year on year out. Amazing. The repertory system has died in the UK. I think the Opera Shakespeare Company and National Company of Actors. Uh, in America, is the repertory theatre still going? The system goes still going? Call them factors, anyone? No? Do any repertories exist? For one? Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf, yeah. So Steppenwolf for Hong Kong Rep. There you go. Um, you know, and uh, here we were at the opening at the World Full of Kindness. And this is this lady's, uh, the, from the British Council, from the Guangzhou Office British Council, who uh, facilitates the international exchange between and the West, and the British Council supported my visit to Hong Kong, half supported. What's the equivalent to the British Council in America? Is there one? No, there isn't, isn't there? Probably like the foreign embassy to the closest thing. You know, uh, and you have the, um, there's a rotary class for business that isn't really that for culture. Okay. Hong Kong is amazing. When I went to Hong Kong in 2006, there was, in their time out, there was like a handful of theatre plays. Now they're like a handful of theatre plays, 
no, there's like, uh, you know, for the month. But now there's schools and theatre plays every week. Hong Kong is, uh, Hong Kong, the theatre's absolutely a renaissance of theatre. Uh, you know, there's not enough venues for all the people that want to do theatre in Hong Kong. Theatre makers in Hong Kong, they have all sorts of theatre from experimental theatre groups funded by the government, by Hong Kong Arts Development Agency, but very similar to the NEA, -A, -E -A. you know, but the budget of the NEA and the budget of the Hong Kong Arts Development Agency is probably that similar. You know, so, um, and you've got the Leisure and, leisure and Council, Leisure and Culture Services, um, so you get Leisure and Culture Services uh, Committee, uh, who's fund lots of the venues, etc. And the universities, it's very, very full, like the UK, you know, the funding. And Hong Kong's UK um, colony in 27 and has preserved the best uh, aspects of culture, I, I feel. Uh, and it's all this administration is done in English. So all the theatres, the lawyers, the business, etc., everything's done in English, all the emails in English. So if you want to interface with Asian, East Asian culture, Hong Kong is a very good place to start. There's some a company called the Hong Kong Fringe Club, you know, and I see students, etc., go over there, you know, and they show up and do things, they get a couple of box of this and they go. And the Hong Kong Refugee Theatre is probably closest to the here's the public theatre in New York, uh, has its own studio space, you know. So um, you have um, Time Out magazine in New York, like the Hong Kong Time Out magazine, this is Shanghai, so there's Beijing. So if you want to find out about theatre, just go to Time Out. You can find it there. You know, if you see Tom Out US, you see the Chinese flag, the bottom, click that flag, and you'll be surprised. You know, so you know. Um, any questions on Hong Theatre in Hong Kong? Or observations at the back? Yes. Um, I was just wondering if by any chance if you see more of a residual uh, theatre tradition from when it was, you know, part of. Influence the question was, is there any residual influence in theatre in Hong Kong from Britain's uh, period? Um, the, when Britain left Hong Kong, they turned their back on English uh, the, the language theatre. So it's like a 180 degree turn. Uh, all the English language theatre companies all shut down very quickly. Um, so it's like a reaction against British culture. So I'm, I'm, I'm probably the first British person to uh, visit Hong Kong as a famous artist. So it's uh, 17 years after, um, 13 years, 16 years after, hand, 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 hand back. So, you know, but the theatre, as it, again, like in China, the theatre that comes commercially from the UK is like Woman in Black, Star at Express, uh, there's Copenhagen, it's all British theatre again that they're importing or translating from English into Chinese. There's some American work. But uh, it's interesting, British theatre seems to have a real strong connection with the Chinese, and I really don't know why. Perhaps in the Q&A, it would be an enlightenment. Uh, okay, a couple of minutes left, and I've got a lot more to get through. Um, so, I want to make really large scale theatre, and the only way to do that is by bringing a lot of people together. So I spent a year and a half uh, retraining to be a little theatre practice, learning how to produce film. Learning about international markets for film, uh, speaking to both agents, managers, etc., learning how to get A list on board. And I, I gave that up actually after, because I had been enough of it, but just between me and you guys and the video camera, uh, that, that film project at Hollywood um, Act has been in touch with me one day, so after it's been dormant. So I don't know if I'm going to keep revive my um, film uh, producing and to be directing, I don't know. So, but that's to create large projects and work internationally. Theatre doesn't have those mechanisms that film has. So, it all wanted to learn to work internationally. Film production and its budget and its finance agreements is very helpful. The closest thing in theatre is the West End. So, here is um, uh, I'm in front of uh, Shaftesbury's Theatre in the West End. Uh, a piece called The Pajama Game. You remember The Pajama Game? Mm -hmm. Yes, American classic. And um, so I reached, uh, I also trained uh, with the, the, uh, the West End the Society of London, London Theatres, which becomes the West End, did a, talk, uh, did a workshops to, for new producers in commercial theatre, which I took part in earlier this year. Very, very competitive. But uh, in, here I am with some of the other, and, in, in, and those of you who are interested in producing, maybe in a few years you'll get these kinds of parts. And you say you can meet the London kind of parts in New York. 
or you might be able to learn from producing, or you might be able to read the, the directors you saw earlier in Beijing. Who knows? And then, so, so let's, let's go full circle. And we, um, we end up, uh, about two weeks ago, I was in Philadelphia for the, which, uh, for the Asian American Theatre Conference and Festival this year. And here are the amazing new batch of theatre makers. You saw what, you saw the old ones in the middle, the back, you saw the last photo. But in three years' time, all these new people that I didn't know joined. And, you know, and there's people of all backgrounds. So there's, uh, you know, we had uh, you know, uh, Latinos, uh, action players, etc. All part of this movement, all joined together by uh, this movement. I'm very proud to be here in Michigan because Michigan is one of the real birthplaces for our uh, Asian American movement and theatre and our, our it's hidden history. Um, and basically, in 1982, um, a, a Chinese man on his, on his bachelor party, Chinese American, um, was accosted in a strip club by two uh, crazy warriors that can't plant. So he went off to that and he went off to that one also. And that's why I go my own business. These two automobile workers uh, were baseball bad and beat him into a coma. He thought, probably because, well, definitely because he thought he was a, a Japanese uh, person. And these Japanese are taking our jobs. Four days later, he passed away. And his last words before he passed away to his mum uh, was, This is so unfair. And this united well, the China, Korea, and Japan. These countries haven't had the most friendly relations with each other. But this united every all the Asian Americans because if you look like me, you were targeted for uh, murder uh, from uh, a very suspected uh, Americans. And so from that moment onwards, there's a birth, real renaissance. There's something very horrible, and like Martin Luther's King was death as well, very horrible. Plus something else, I'm very, it's, you know, it's great to be in Michigan and to join these dots, you know, uh, and then uh, our professor will be taking me to, the, to Detroit to look at these areas next week, and you know, that will be very moving for me, I think. So here we are, and, and to come full circle to um, these in Minneapolis, I think was this by Gentle China, which is a satire on um, our view of Asian Americans here, and also uh, Connection to Asian Americans and mainland uh, China. And here we go, so new generations of Asian American theatre makers in Michigan in Ann Arbor. So, this is a Monday after audition workshop and a Dutch meeting afterwards. So, we've got uh, business majors, science majors, um, you know, Chinese history majors, we've got uh, people of all ethnicities, not just East Asia, but uh, Asian American, African American, you know, uh, all coming together to make uh, Asian American theatre in uh, Michigan, and you can come and see it um, on, um, on uh, Monday, 7 p.m. at the Big Club at the Chocolate Centre, or um, Tuesday, 6 p.m. at the Boulevard Room in, where is that? Here at North Campus. North Campus. North Campus. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. We've got some, um, so we've got 12 minutes left for questions, but thank you very much. Uh, my impressions of uh, Chinese and Chinese people in the 
theatre, and then some of the theatre in mainland China? Um, it's quite it's a difficult one to answer. So for, it's, uh, I would say it's very much like a uh, in the West, that theatre is certainly an educated elite. That seems like it. Well, so many of the students are from universities, etc. So, you know, uh, my landlord in Shanghai came to see the piece from Hong Kong. I was not aware of the theatre at all. My landlord was quite an educated, travelled person. So I think that, um, I think, you know, but the theatre is cool, so it's the underground culture, you know. So you, you've got the two big theatres doing like the usual um, theatre equivalents. But I think that because uh, uh, it's cool, the underground, you know, etc., is certainly much more popular, you know, spreading around more uh, daily. The underground culture in Beijing, I went to some concerts, the energy is amazing. You know? So, like in any, you know, uh, or maybe like in Eastern Europe in the past, I don't know. There is, uh, there is there's, there's more than one side to China. Um, but certainly within the educated elite, I mean, government officials, etc., they expect to go to the theatre or not for all that. They get given free tickets, like, I think sometimes, here to see. So I don't see that's that different in here. Uh, TV channels, uh, they're thirsty for this kind of input. So, you know, so these kind of plays will go to news channels, etc. So I don't, I'm not, there is something called the drama or uh, theatre or China's CCTV company. I saw we talk about how theatre artists on it. So, you know, so it's just beginning uh, theatre in China. They've just opened a multi-million, uh, there's two huge things opening this year. There's a huge DreamWorks to open a huge film studio outside of Shanghai, or a long one anyway. Uh, uh, there's a film studio bigger than all the other studios put together in Shanghai. And outside Beijing, there's a theatre making facility, the theatre is a theatre, a multi million, hundreds of million pound, pound, dollars, sorry, I don't know, open. So there's this infrastructure and all new developments in China, many, many of them have theatres put in. So, you know, so there will be a lot more accessibility to theatre, and there's a huge, for us creators, more people to communicate with, and for the business people, huge markets to tap into. The people that thought, Film was dying in China a few years ago. It didn't take a punt on it. I keep regretting it now. China's film, film industry will probably overtake the US very soon. I think it's overtaken Japan. Okay, answer your question. Uh, who's next, please? Comments or comments or other as well? So somebody thinks of another one. You mentioned the Saigon yes. and also the RSC. Yes. And there was a flap about racial casting in both of them. So maybe you talk a little bit about that. You are against that. Yeah, I, I was, it's, I'm, I'm conflicted in it because I believe in freedom of speech and freedom of ecclesiastic like, expression that like anyone should look at past things how they want to. So what you're referring to in Saigon is 25 years ago, Jonathan Price was cast as a uh, uh, Eurasian man and he Silas, Tate, etc. When it came in London, when it came to America, there was a, uh, there was, equity said he couldn't come and then he could. Uh, and that really incensed the Asian Americans. And so, Yellow Face, which is one of David Finn Brown's plays, the reaction to that, which are the uh, a lot of students in global theatre are studying now. Uh, the Orphanage Zhao, well, I mean, should, let's give, let me give you a flavour of the theatre connected to China and the UK. So we had Wild Swans a couple of years back, co production uh, uh, between here and the UK. And does anyone know the subject matter of Wild Swans? Anyone? I, I, I have trouble hearing what you're saying. Oh, I'm so sorry. Would you like to come to the front? The, the subject matter of what? Wild Swans. Wild Swans. By Yong Chan. Yeah, it's, it's about three daughters of China, and it's about cultural evolution. So there's one player that's talking about cultural, re cultural revolution and how uh, people, um, yeah, China massacred its uh, artists, etc. Which is, uh, you know, now they're saying that, you know, within China, we can't talk about cultural revolution now. We couldn't in 2006, but in 2012 we could talk about cultural revolution because they made some sort of, I kind of have the phrase they use, but mistakes for me. Uh, okay, so the Cultural Revolution is one major play in London. The next play was about Ai Weiwei and his incarceration in China. That was last, early last year. 
Uh, and another play last year was about Tiananmen Square. It wasn't about Tiananmen Square, it's about this man that saw Tiananmen Square from his hotel window and felt really traumatized by it and found it difficult to find love. Brilliant play, but the subject matter was an uh, uh, application man's um, um, having sex with some uh, girl in the toilet and then up uh, being traumatized by witnessing Tiananmen Square. Um, you know, um, so they, they didn't go together at the end. So, yeah, anyway, a romantic comedy meets um, stupid massacre. <laughs> and um, but it was a brilliant production and won awards in the UK. And then we had a, I can't remember the title, I think it's the world of history, because I'm not sure. So, again, about very poor um, migrant workers. So, there's a, there's a third, the only theatre you get to see in China would be the equivalent of the UK hearing about what we did in South Africa, what the UK did in the Middle East, you know, what it plays about you know, the massacres of Native Americans, plays about uh, Dennis Rodden, is it the guy that got beaten in the winter? Yeah, Rodney King. Rodney King uh, plays about um, you know, Vietnam, you know, so, so that's, is that, is, so is, is America represented by Vietnam, Rodney King, and uh, Native Americans? Yes or no? Uh, yes, or no, I don't think so. And likewise, China, you know, cultural revolution, Tiananmen Square, uh, censorship, uh, and my good work is incredibly important things, and some of my work is connected to it myself. But it's just, um, you know, um, that's the kind of work that's been put on. And it's been put on by white British, Caucasian creative teams. So, the participation of people like myself. Uh, aren't uh, you know uh, able to, uh, aren't uh, able to access government funding that is set aside for us, which is uh, giving to others. Yes, at the back. What's your question? Uh, do you have a comment? Does the lady have a comment? Do you have a comment? Oh no. Oh, I thought I did a comment. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we've got another. Three minutes, any more questions or comments? I'd love to hear some of your thoughts. So, um, the other piece was just premiered recently in the UK. Correct, yes. Is it in the past year or so? Uh, last May. And so it seems like maybe some parts of, of, of Europe might be more um, part of, you know, uh, I don't want to say a little bit of records and casting. For example, this, this past year, I was in the UK and I. Uh, and it was actually cast with a white French actor playing uh, the King of Siam, even though the rest of the ensemble was all you know, Vietnamese uh, French people uh, and all racial uh, heritage. Um, do you think other parts of Europe are sort of more, um, I don't want to say behind mm -hmm. on this, but you know? I'm not very aware of Europe. I have been to some European conventions, and it seems that when we talk about press practice, Inspired me as a theatre maker to be able to make 
theatre in China, and then people from all backgrounds. There's lots of French people in China, German, Canadians, uh, Americans, um, and Australians. You know, so there are people all around the world, but you know, somewhere like Michigan, if you, you know, it could be that it's, uh, there's heritage from the industries, etc. There's so many parallels between, you know, I saw a magazine called in Detroit, the Paris of the West, for some of this architecture. And there's also very French architecture in Shanghai, for instance. If, no, if anyone starts to scratch the surface of the connections between um, Michigan and China, I'm sure we'll find many. I'll finish on um, just uh, my next project uh, will be uh, well, I'm be reimagining the Turandot of Puccini. So reimagined in uh, in the Marco Polo time China. So I have partners in America, UK, and the uh, China and Hong Kong to put this together as an R and D, and I'll hopefully take it to full production. So maybe one day, a very grand opera version of Tondo with Chinese instruments and what's going to be coming again. Well, maybe not, we'll see. That's not been my gift. And everybody, please, uh, you know, it's great to hear my um, my descriptions, but you can see this work in action on Monday. It's a great chance to see Rio Chinchon Channel at 7 o'clock at the Charter Centre on Monday and Tuesday 6 p.m. at the I'd love to see some of you there and hear some, some um, reactions you know, from that. I'll just say, uh, you know, are there any burning comments before I close? Cheers, would you like to say Thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Please take my email down in the book at jordan.org.uk if you want to stay in touch with me. And uh, uh, I'm, you know, um, there's a course going to talk back at Wednesday at 3 o'clock next week and ask you all I need to uh, about that. Um, you know, uh, so, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>